Hey, horsemen, I'm Becca Salamone, and you're watching American Horse Talk Live. And we're back live again. We had problems with our uh, audio, but we got some earbuds with uh, Dr. Judd Easterwood, and everything's working out good now. How are you doing, Judd? Good, Rebecca. Sorry for the difficulties, and I'm glad to be back. Yeah, yeah. We did this for two years. Um, we started with the Alabama Horse Talk Radio, then we did Southern Horse Talk, where we had video interviews that I edited. And now we're doing it live. So, yeah, you've grown, grown the whole way with us. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm excited about it. Thanks yeah. for having me back. Yeah, and we appreciate you donating your, um, your time like this to, to tell us these things. It's very generous of you. Sure, no problem. All right, so, so today you wanted to talk about a topic that's kind of scary to horse owners, and that's strangles. So tell us, first of all, what is strangles? Yeah, for sure. Strangles is a disease that we encounter every year really and uh it's one of the more contagious if not the most contagious horse disease that we face it's a bacterial disease and it's uh it's similar to strep throat in in people i'm sure most people can relate to that or have kids that have had that but uh horses can get the same type of infection in their throat and it can be spread from horse to horse we've been seeing a lot of that in this county and some surrounding counties uh in the last few weeks so we want to try to bring that to people's attention here uh today do you think that's because of the weather or what causes that it's difficult to know we see it uh you know i tend to think that some years are worse than others and i think on the more the milder winters we tend to see it uh pop up a little more frequently so it's hard to really put your finger on what makes it uh more prevalent in certain years versus others but uh but this year definitely seems to be a um, going to be a bad year for it Okay, and is it caused by a bacteria or a virus? It is. It's caused by a strep bacteria. Um, there's a couple of different species that can cause it that we see. The most common is strep equi, uh, and the, the one that most people hear about, and uh, it, it's the one that's definitely the most contagious and causes the most problems. Okay, and what kind of symptoms do, do horse owners see? In the horses. Uh, well, usually you'll start to see the horse uh, just acting a little lethargic, maybe not wanting to eat. Sometimes they'll present with a dry cough or a productive cough with some nasal drainage. Uh, usually the first thing you're going to see, though, is if your horse is acting a little bit lethargic or acting like he, he or she doesn't feel well, uh, you ch check those horses' temperature and they'll be running a little bit of a fever, usually greater than 102 temperature. Okay. All right. So, so what can horse owners do to, you know, comfort their animals? Um, yeah. And then also what to, can they do to prevent it in the first place? Right. Well, this is a, this is a disease again, that it's a bacterial disease. So it's very difficult to vaccinate for it. Although we do have a vaccine that is available for horses and we recommend it. Now, this particular vaccine is one that is not necessarily preventative in nature, but, um, uh, but can definitely, if you give it to your horse and your horse happens to come into contact with strangles, it can definitely make the course of the disease less so that the horse doesn't get as sick. And it can definitely uh, allow the horse to get over to the disease much quicker. So we recommend that vaccination for these animals, especially for horses that are traveling and coming into contact with other horses. Okay. And then, um, you know, once they, they get this, do they ever get over it? Absolutely. Most of them will. And again, in vaccinated horses, they can get over it much easier. Uh, for non-vaccinated horses, it can be a much more of a severe disease that can cause swelling in the throat area, really bad nasal discharge. Um, you can see horses run a very high fever and go off of feed for days. And that's where it gets the nickname strangles because these horses can have some throat swelling and uh, some problems swallowing and things like that, almost like the horse is strangling. Those are in more severe cases, and again, in horses that may not be vaccinated. So we like to recommend that vaccination to try to prevent those symptoms if your horse happens to come into contact with the disease. Okay, and then what about, um, well, before I ask that question, let, let me show this up here. I got a comment on here. Uh, Lisa Wright Henson says, good morning. Do you know Lisa? Uh, uh, not off the top of my head. I'm sorry. Yeah, she, she's a trail riding and dancing buddy of mine. Awesome. How's it going, Lisa? Lisa? If you have any questions, you can type them in the the comments, and we'll we'll ask Judd for you. But thank you for joining the show. Appreciate it. So the next question I was going to ask you is, um, what about you know performance horses and how how what do you recommend to people that have performance horses that get this? Uh, they get the disease or for, as far as vaccination uh, for strangles. So if you have a horse that happens to get strangles, uh, 
actually there's a couple of different ways that we approach this as veterinarians. A lot of times we just choose to do nothing. I know that sounds terrible, but uh, most of the time if you put these horses on antibiotics, you can slow the course of the disease. So very rarely will we start antibiotic therapy on horses unless they're severely affected. Mm -hmm. uh, and some veterinarians, based on personal you know, experiences in the past, would treat these horses differently from a case-to-case -case basis. But a lot of times if the horse isn't severely affected, we'll just let it kind of run its course and manage the fever and put them on uh, supportive care to, to try to help them feel better while, they're, while their body is fighting off the actual disease. In severe okay. cases, you know, horses that are in the hospital, Little, we'll provide antibiotic therapy, sometimes fluid therapy and things like that. But it is a disease that these horses can get over. One okay. other thing that's interesting with this particular disease also is after the horse recovers from it, those horses will have, uh, their body will be immune to strangles for a period of five to seven years somewhere in there, we think, so that vaccination will not be necessary during that time period after they've gotten over having the actual disease. But then after that time period, they're susceptible again? They will not be susceptible. Their body is almost like chicken pox in people. So they will have a period of immunity where their body will be able to fight the disease off. So okay. as a matter of fact, as veterinarians, we like to recommend if your horse actually has, has the disease strangles, we like to avoid vaccinating those particular animals for a, a number of years after they get over the disease. Okay. All right. So Lisa says... Um, let me just put that in here. I was told after the age of 15, strangles is not necessary. I guess that she means the vaccine. I still re like to recommend it even in older horses. Uh, more than likely in those late teens to early 20 year old horses, they will have come into contact with it at some point in their life and develop some sort of immunity. Uh, but just from a safety standpoint, I would still recommend vaccinating those horses, even the older population, yes. Okay. And um, let's see, Stan Smith had a comment here. I'm not exactly sure what he's asking. <laughs> this is a friend of mine, and he, he's got some difficulties with um, yeah. typing his questions sometimes. <laughs> we all know that about Stan. We love him for it. I think what he's asking here is, um, you know, a, a advice about, you know, not having, some people don't have a dry place to put their horse up. And right. does that affect anything? Well, that's a good question. Let's talk about the way that strangles is transmitted because that a lot of people have a lot of misconceptions as far as uh, this particular bacteria being able to get into the soil or live on objects in the stall or in the barn, and that's just not the case. Most of the time, this particular bacteria cannot live outside of the horse for longer than a 24-hour period, so it's got to be inside of a horse. Most of the time, this particular bacteria is transmitted from nose to nose contact between two horses and most definitely in contaminated water troughs from the nasal drainage. So that's going to be the most contagious areas. Uh, but it has to come from the actual nasal drainage or secretions from the horse's mouth or saliva with the bacteria <coughs> actually in it. And they have to transmit that to another horse. So it's not airborne. They can't really cough it or sneeze it but the actual, actual mucus or the snot production from the horse would actually be contagious. So those are the things that we like to try to avoid. If you actually get that drainage on your boot and take it into another stall, that could potentially be contagious. So we always like to be mindful of a horse that's affected or any horse for that matter that has any nasal drainage. You always want to try to uh, either isolate that horse or definitely keep your horse away from him. Okay, great. All right, so, so I got the question wrong and, and uh, Lisa helped me out there. Uh, Stan was asking about abscesses during this wet weather. Sure. Uh, foot abscesses or abscesses associated with strangles? I think foot. I hope he's okay. meaning foot. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we just treated one of your horses for a foot abscess the other day. We're obviously yeah. we're seeing a lot of those right now with wet weather, keeping the feet soft. And uh, we see a ton of those just from when crevices open up inside of the hoof wall and allow bacteria to migrate into the hoof wall and create an abscess. So those are pretty common, pretty easily treated as well. Yeah, for sure. In fact, that horse that you treated is Stan's horse. So maybe oh, that's okay, why great. he's asking that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we also see one interesting thing related to that. We also see abscesses associated with strangles. Uh, a lot of people have seen horses that can have lymph nodes underneath their jaw and throat latch area that can rupture 
and drain to the outside. And that is usually towards the end of the course of the disease that we see those. And uh, you can see that commonly as the horse's body tries to fight off the disease. It'll wall it off inside of those lymph nodes and then try to rupture it to the outside and let it drain. That's the horse's natural way to clear the disease. So okay. uh, that's an interesting note uh, since we're talking about abscesses. Okay. And then also um, we want to talk about just core guidelines for vaccination. Mm -hmm. So what do you Yeah, recommend? just while we're on the subject of vaccinating with, for strangles, you know, we just wanted to cover real quickly for the last couple of weeks, we've been having a ton of mosquitoes coming out with the warmer weather. So I just wanted to hit on that. Everybody needs to be mindful. Go ahead and get definitely your mosquito-borne illnesses. Uh, get your horses vaccinated against those. There's going to be uh, your West Nile virus and your encephalitis, which are Eastern and Western encephalitis. Those are really common in the Southeast. Uh, and most of those vaccines are going to be uh, combination vaccines that include a tetanus shot, maybe a herpes virus or a flu virus uh, in there with it, and then along with the strangles vaccine. So those are your core vaccinations that we're recommending this time of year. Uh, some people choose to give rabies or not. I recommend them in my practice, but for sure you want to get your horse protected against strangles and mosquito-borne illnesses right now. Okay, and do the majority of horse owners um, go ahead and give vaccinations, or do they just let that slip? The majority of them do, and I think it's uh, you know it's one reason why we see you know definitely in, in this area, uh, and my clients do a great job of vaccinating. So we don't see a ton of horses with uh, mosquito-borne illnesses, but you get out into the more rural areas where you see less vaccinations, mosquito populations are still the same, and we see those horses get sick. Okay. And um, tell them we're going to raise the camera a little bit because she's just a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get us a see if we can get us a tripod for the yeah. Next. I know her arms are tired. <laughs> we'll, we'll finish in just a minute, Morgan. Sorry. <laughs> um, all right. So Lisa had a follow up question. Uh, she was asking, um, is it better to um, let it run its course or to open up the the abscess on the feet? Uh, on a foot abscess. Yes. So for the foot abscess, we usually like to, I like, if the horse is really lame, I like to go ahead and try to open those up and allow them to drain from the bottom. If you can, you know, bandage those and keep them clean after you open them up. And that just provides the horse with some uh, pain relief more quickly. A lot of those foot abscesses will migrate up the hoof wall and rupture out at the hairline, what we call graveling out at the coronary band. And that's the horse's natural way for, for them to handle an abscess as well. But typically that, takes a few days for that to occur for that process to occur and that's a lot of pain for the horse to have to go through while that's happening so if we can get to it before then identify where it is and open that up and drain it then we like to try to do that yeah for sure yeah the, the one that uh stan's horse had was really uh, a bad one Just yeah it was a really bad one. <laughs> yeah you can imagine if we, we tried to let that thing go to the hairline in three or four days that would have been excruciating for that horse so if we can yeah. get to them earlier go ahead and drain them get them some relief we like to do that yeah for sure all right well um let's see anything else that you want to share about vaccines today i don't think so that's pretty much got it covered if you have any questions you can uh feel free to call my office or go to my facebook page uh, my phone number is 205-663-4000 and my office manager beverly and my technicians morgan are really good to help with any questions you may have and, uh, you know, if, if there are any questions they can't handle, I'll be glad to talk with you. Great. Hopefully and on the next live, we'll be a little bit better technologically. Yeah. Yeah. This was our first premiere episode. So we we're, we're kind of working out some bugs here. Um, so we're going to be doing vet call with Dr. E every month. Uh, have you any idea right now what the topic is going to be next month? You need to think about that. Uh, we'll probably be thinking about it in the next week or two, but we'll let you know and get it out there. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get it out there so people can get their questions in advance. Sound Absolutely. Good? Sounds great. All right. Well, thanks for joining us today and, and sharing your knowledge. We appreciate it. All right. See y'all later. All right. And, and guys, thank you for putting your comments on here and asking your questions. Make sure you come back and do that each time and share it with your horse friends. If you're enjoying our content, go to the American Horse Talk page to like it. You can get updates when we go live. Join the American Horse Talk group to help us share love of country and love of horse. Thanks so much, Jen. Have a great Have weekend, guys. See you. All right. Talk Bye. to you later. Bye-bye.